Hello everyone and very warm welcome to the channel. I was reading through this SBIRT website online and came across this difference between buy encoder versus cross encoder and then I thought why should I suffer alone. I would also try to bore you with the difference between these two in as simple words as possible. So this video is a theoretical video, a conceptual video where I will try to explain in layman terms without any machine learning mumbo jumbo or um, any sort of esoteric concepts as what exactly is the difference between these two terms. Normally, they, these terms pop up whenever we are doing some sort of retrieval augmented generation or dealing with embeddings. So that is why I think it is quite important to at least have an idea as what exactly these two things are, especially when it comes to giving your own data to large language models. Imagine you are searching for something online and you want the most relevant results. To achieve this, search engines use a technique called embedding to represent words, phrases or documents as numerical vectors or numerical representations. Same is the case with your large language models. They don't know words. So what happens is that whenever we have our own data, like these LLMs don't know who Fahad Mirza is. So if I want the large language model or LLM to know who Fahad Mirza is, I will put that detail, let's say in a PDF or text document, then I will divide that document into smaller pieces. I will convert those smaller pieces into numerical representations or numerical vectors or embeddings. And then I will store those embeddings in some sort of database or vector store. So embedding is simply a numerical representation of your text. Now, the second thing which we need to be aware of is called as RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation or Retrieve, Augment and Generate. So what happens is that when we store the data about Fahad Mirza into a vector store, then an index is of course created on it so that it will be retrieved. So a user comes in, types a question to LLM, who is Fahad Mirza? Now our RAG pipeline kicks in, it picks up user's query, convert it into that text query into tokens or numerical representation, then it does this similarity search and there are a lot of algorithms around that cosine similarity is one of them. So it does a similarity search in our vector store to find the similar sort of numerical vectors in the vector store and then retrieves it and then augments it with, our, with the user's query and then give it to LLM and LLM generates a response. So that is what this rag is. Now, what happens is that when this information is being retrieved from that vector store, there is another model which kicks in that reorders the search results to improve relevance and accuracy. Because I'm just talking about uh, my own case, right? But if there are billions and billions of tokens there, then it, it becomes very important to have some sort of mechanism that will improve not only the relevance and accuracy, but also make sure it is faster. So that is what a re-ranking model does. Now the interesting part here is that I was talking about this rack pipeline where a user's query is augmented with a return result from vector store and given to LLM. So that is one LLM, but for con for embedding or for numerical representation, in order to convert the text into that numerical representation, you need an, another model which is called as embedding model. And then for the re-ranking, which basically reorders the search results from the vector store to improve relevance, you need another model that is called as a re-ranking model. So in a production grade, big real world rack pipeline, normally you have three different models, embedding model to convert text into numerical representation, re-ranking model to reorder search results from vector store and your actual LLM, which receives the augmented query. So augmented query means the user's own query plus the returned result from re-ranker and they are bundled together to give to LLM so that LLM would have more context around user's query and then it will be able to give more grounded response. Now, 
that is settled now we need to know what exactly is by encoder and cross encoder and that is quite interesting uh, concept when it comes to re-rankers or embedding models or the whole rack pipeline so first try to see what is by encoder on the left hand side so by encoder prepares your embeddings beforehand so for example we have a document we give it to our embedding model it converts it and then it just prepares all the embeddings and now in the future whenever users query come up then it does the searching so it is quite fast it is scalable but in this case you can see that the user query is decoupled from the document so it might sometime miss the subtle contextual relationship between the queries and the embeddings so it is only good for the first stage retrieval or the initial searching or the high level searches whereas on the right hand side we have cross encoder so what happens is that instead of storing the embeddings in the vector store beforehand what we do is whenever a user's query comes in we combine the query and document we convert it into numerical representation and store both of these together and the document is the one which is related to that query so not only we are storing the document itself but also the potential query so we are basically preempting the whole query and its context this is contextually rich it will give more grounded result but what would be the catch of course it will be computationally very expensive and very slow so that is what cross encoder does so by encoder quickly retrieves relevant document but might miss slight nuances whereas cross encoders provide more accurate results but are, but are very slow very expensive so and this is where re-ranking comes in uh, more importantly for by encoder it's not that necessary so now you can already see that you already might have a lot of objections or maybe both of them or each one of them so that is where a lot of debate is going on and that is why we see more and more research papers popping up for example just to give you an idea that um, uh, there is a paper i'm forgetting its name there is a lecture or paper from Stanford where they have introduced a new technique called as late interaction, which is less computational and it is similar to cross encoder because we can already see that cross encoder is more beneficial because it is more rich, it is more contextually grounded, but it is very expensive to maintain. So that is why people are trying to find balance between by encoder and cross encoders. So that is what I wanted to share with you that whenever in the future you come across these two terms now you have more grounded uh, information about these. Uh, if you still have any questions please put it in the comments I will try to answer it. Of course I haven't gone into the way more detail of machine, machine learning, any linear algebra or any equations because uh, you know I just wanted to cover it for mere portals like us. So that's it. Um, feel free to share your own thoughts if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot and i will drop the link to this as part of comment in the video description thank you very much